This tutorial is on the Blue Jay. I'm first starting with the background. I'm wetting the background up to the edge of the Blue Jay using a wash brush. I'm not saturating it, I'm just wetting it slightly so that when I put my first wash in, the paint will spread a little easier. I'm mixing a sap green with a little bit of viridian green. I'm adding in um, some light washes. I'm gonna use my, my bigger brush, my wash brush. Viridian green with a cadmium yellow light. Going right up to the Blue Jay. If you feel uncomfortable going up to the Blue Jay, uh, use a smaller brush for this. And I'm adding in some broad colors, darker greens, and getting in a first layer for that background. Defining the edge of where the tail is. And I'm going right up to it again. Using the same greens, Viridian green, um, sap green, and a little bit of cadmium yellow. I'm keeping my brush strokes really soft because the background should be diffused. There shouldn't be any real sharp lines back there. I'm using a wet brush to clean up the edges. While it's still wet, I can push out any paint that came in. And I make an, can make a harder edge along the bird's back and um, do the details between the legs. I don't want the edge of the bird to be hard, but defined. So I'm mixing a little bit of gray. I'm using ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and a little yellow ochre. If you have a Payne's gray, you can use that. And I'm first doing the underneath part of the bird on its chest. The back um, part of the bird towards its tail is a little darker, but for now I'm just doing a light layer. Adding um, some blue to that as it gets closer and defining where um, the back of the chest meets. So I'm using sort of the same color just to define where some of the colors are going to go. Adding some cerulean into it to brighten it up. And some purple. If you feel uncomfortable going around the eye or anything like that, you could always add masking fluid. And I'm obviously I'm using a smaller round brush, adding in some cerulean here to get the shape. Notice I'm going downward just like as if my br uh, brush was touching the wing of the bird. I'm taking long, big brush strokes. Adding a little bit more blue as I go. I'm not adding the full amount of blue right now. I'm just adding the lightest lights or the underlying color. But I'm going to define a little bit so I know where things go. Like the edge of that tail. This will just help me see um, to make a map of where everything really goes. I'm still working in the lightest lights. You can even use blue to go into those parts that will be black because it's going to be darker anyway. And that's where the wing comes forward. And I'm letting some of those brush strokes be a little bit scratchy too. I'm using some black to outline where the legs and the feet go. I'm not detailing them, I'm just kind of getting a lay-in of where they are. Try to keep your brush really thin here on the legs. It's a really thin area. 
And then I'm just using some yellow ochre and a little burnt sienna to fill in the branch. These are all things I'll come back to, but again, this is my first layer. I'm gonna go back into that background. It's dried a little bit, it's still a little bit wet, so it can just absorb. I'm using um, a little bit of black and purple, a little burnt umber, and a little bit of alizarin crimson to make that space in, in the corner a little darker. There's a few places that are a little darker. So I'll just do a light layering of it. Now I'm adding yellow ochre to my sap green, or I'm sorry, cadmium yellow, uh, the darker one to my sap green, and going right up to those edges. A little burnt sienna in that to tone down the greens, right? Complementary color is red and let those purples and the greens sort of mix together a little bit. Notice that my, my brush is moving in more of a circular motion. I'm just trying not to make any marks. That's Viridian Green over a sap green, so it has a little bit of yellow. And this has a little bit of burnt umber in it. Your background will not look exactly like my background. Um, it's really just to get the feeling of a green space behind the, sub the subject matter. So I'm pulling in um, some burnt umbers and yellow ochres and a little red for places that I see red. And again, that sap green, just layering right into it. And I'm gonna pull some of that purple on, on the right side to find some of those spaces of it. Some sap green. Carefully going right up to my subject matter. Again, if this is too big of a brush for you, you could always switch to a smaller brush, whatever you feel comfortable with. And in between the legs and up to my, my little log at the bottom. Now I'm getting a little brighter on the right side. and adding in some contrast. I'm not outlining the bird again. Outlining makes things flat, so I am going right up to the bird without creating a line. I'm adding in some bluer greens at this point. So a little bit of blue mixing with my green to get some some cooler tones and push some of those greens um, back into the background and it'll create a deep, deeper space by adding blue to the green Some yellow ochre, sap green again, just getting some brighter chroma. Again, pulling in some of his purples, some blues, make those greens a little bit cooler.
I'm not blending them together. I'm just letting them optically blend. And because everything's pretty wet, it's, it's soft enough on the edges. I'm gonna push this back a little further. Adding a little bit of blue again, make it a little deeper space. I'm defining the edge of that branch. Now I'm gonna go back into the bird. Using like a darker blue to like line out some of the details. And if you want to use a darker blue for where places like the black are, just so you, you can keep an idea of that and it helps you define the space or the form a bit more. So I wouldn't go black until the very last layer, um, but using a blue, a blue gray would be fine. And I'm, I'm just adding a little definition to find the edge of those feathers. And I want to pull out a little bit of color in the eye because there's a highlight in the eye. So I want to leave space for that. That's it.